All right, sorry about that. Um, I had a bit right. of an issue sorry about that. Um, with um, audio. Okay, so had a bit of an audio issue, sorry about that, uh, but I am back now and we're going to get started on fudgy brownies. So you don't need a lot of ingredients or a lot of equipment, but I'm going to show a lot of different options for the things that you can do uh, if you don't have a specific piece of equipment. Uh, that there can be a lot of things that can be replaced and uh, I also made this little visual for ingredients so that you only need eight ingredients or seven if you don't want to use any inclusions such as nuts or chocolate chips or anything else um, so I'll just put that back up over there uh, all right so then uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to preheat our oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and then we also want to get a pot of water, uh, just like maybe an inch or two of water, not a lot, uh, simmering because then we're going to have a bowl that will fit on top of our pot and set it right on top of there. Um, if you want to use a microwave, then you can to melt your butter along for the brownies, but I don't have a microwave currently, uh, so I'm just going to be melting the butter on top of uh, a bain marie, which is what this is called, uh, which is French for a double boiler. And so then our next step is we want to make sure that we have all of our ingredients. So the first one is 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now unsalted butter is pretty important when it comes to baking because you want to control everything that you have in your recipe. And so unsalted butter doesn't have <laughs> added salt in there. Yep, Billy probably thinks I'm talking to him. Billy is my parrot and he's just set up right inside the living room so he can probably hear me talking. Um, but you wanna control all the salt that you have in your recipe. And so you're wanting to uh, make sure that unsalted butter is what you've got. If you do only have salted butter, then you just want to reduce the amount of salt that you have in your recipe and that you use just to make sure that whatever you're making isn't overly salted. And then our next ingredient that we're going to have measured out is white sugar. And I've just got a really big container of it here. And so what you want to do is you want to measure out one cup and a quarter of, of uh, white granulated sugar. And it is very important that, you know, it's kind of piled high inside of the cup, but you want to make sure that it's nice and even. That way you don't have too much sugar and it will throw, if you do have too much sugar, it'll throw off the chemistry balance of your baking and it might make things too wet because sugar in its nature wants to be a liquid and it will seek out any liquid that's around it, which is why they usually advise that you store sugar in a dry airtight container. All right, so I think that is five. <laughs> okay, so I think I haven't lost track. So that should be a cup and a quarter of white sugar, and we will just set that aside. Then our next thing we want to measure out is three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. And the cocoa powder that I have, I actually got while I was on a cruise with uh, some friends in January. Um, and it's, uh, it's actually from the Dominican Republic, and I'm super excited about that because it is one of the better qualities of cocoa. And so uh, we want three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. And then just like with the white sugar, you definitely want to make sure that, hmm, that you only have what you've got. I need another bowl because I didn't think that through. just going to straighten this out, make sure we have a nice even. <laughs> you 
you got three quarters of a cup? That's pretty good that that's how much you need. <laughs> that cocoa powder was definitely meant for brownies then. <laughs> So this is our third. <laughs> All right, so I'll just dump that back into the bag and then I'll just set that aside. Uh, so then we've got our cocoa powder and then our next bit is actually going to be kosher salt that we only need one quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt and that can go right in with your cocoa powder. Um, I'm just gonna... Sorry I forgot to forgot to start the stove to uh, heat up my pot of water. <laughs> uh, okay so the next piece that we're going to measure out is our vanilla. So I just use regular vanilla extract and I just need about a tablespoon of it. Um, vanilla, it doesn't really do much to the actual chemistry of the brownies, that it really is there just to add more of an aroma and a very slight flavor than anything else. So if you really like vanilla or you don't like vanilla, you can add a little bit more or you can completely cut it out. It's not super important. Um, then we've got our two eggs right here. And then I'm just gonna crack these right into this bowl. Then I'll just throw these away quick. So we have our eggs, and then our last bit that we need is actually going to be our flour. And we'll need half a cup of flour. Oh, uh, a teaspoon of vanilla. Sorry about that. I'll have to be better about my uh, diction when I'm speaking. <laughs> so just the same with all of our other dries. I'm going to just measure it all out. And just tap that into our little bowl. Uh, we don't need a lot because what we are going for is a very fudgy brownie and so it doesn't need to be very, uh, it doesn't need a lot of flour because we're not making it very cake-like. We want something that's very moist and, you know, something that would be really good on top of ice cream. Um, all right, then, let me just make sure here that... So our oven is preheating. We have our stove warming up. And then, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our butter and then we're just going to place it in this bowl over the pot because we want the butter to be fully melted before we add anything else to it. Um, <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna just the screen a bit. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, well, really, for right now, we're just waiting for the butter to melt. And while I wait for that, um, I don't know. I didn't really have something else to do while I waited. Um, well, I could talk about the equipment that I've been using. Oh, where did I learn to bake? Um, well, uh, I've wanted to be a baker since I was like nine or ten years old. Uh, I grew up in a family that did a lot of home cooking and a lot of big meals. Uh, so, you know, I grew up sitting on the counter helping my mom and my dad and my grandparents uh, cook for the whole family, for holidays, for birthdays. Um, and so it just seemed like something that was always really good. But when I was 10 years old, I actually got to go to Japan as part of a student exchange program. Um, and 
while I was there, I didn't know a lot of Japanese because I was 10. And, um, you know, I barely spoke good English at 10 years old. Uh, but my host mother, she took me to this bakery that was just down the street. And, you know, I didn't really understand much of what she and the bakers were uh, talking about, but they were having a really good discussion while this baker was decorating these tiny little cakes that looked like turtles. And I thought they were so cute. And it just being in a bakery where everything was made that day or the night before was just such a very wholesome experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I've loved Sailor Moon since they were playing it, since it premiered in America uh, long, long, long ago. I think, wasn't Sailor Moon, wasn't Usagi's American name, like, like Zoe or something? No, that was her friend. But, but yeah, I, I watched the American dub of Sailor Moon and it was so great and I loved it so much. Just so I definitely, I definitely love Sailor Moon so much. Um, yeah, it, it was a weird name. Um, oh, Zoe was, I'm gonna look this, I'm gonna look this up. This is gonna bother me now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Usagi's American name. Serena. Uh, okay, her American name in the sub was Serena, it says. Uh, I mean, that's kind of close to Serenity. So, I mean, there's there's something there. There's that. Um, but yeah, going to Japan and being there for a couple of weeks was just a really great experience. And it definitely, you know, introduced me to the world of baking because I didn't understand a single thing the bakers were talking about. But I definitely could see that, you know, they loved what they were doing and it's something that I could see myself doing. And so I, come, I you know, I came back home um, and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And ever since then, you know, I've been learning online and learning through books and watching every cooking show that I could find. Uh, family members and friends have signed me up for every food magazine. Uh, I've just gotten tons and tons of gifts of uh, cookbooks. And uh, when I was getting ready to graduate high school, I applied to uh, a couple of baking, a couple of culinary schools, but uh, I ultimately got accepted to the Art Institutes International, and so that's where I went and I got my associate's degree in baking and pastry, and that was about eight years ago now. Um, so it's just, it's just super great, and I love it so much, and. All right, so looks like our butter is fully melted. So I'm just gonna move this back here just to show you guys the process. Um, whenever something is steaming, definitely make sure you have something to grab the bowl with. You never wanna grab a bowl with steam actively rolling off of it because you could burn yourself. And so definitely, definitely, definitely play it safe when it comes to doing anything on the stove. We can just turn that off for now. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add in our uh, cocoa powder and salt mixture. And we're just going to dump that right on in. And with a whisk, we're just going to whisk it together. So, let me see, let me tip this down a little bit so I can show you guys what I'm mixing. So we're going to mix it up and mix it together until all of the powder is gone. And then it will look really nice and creamy like that. And then our next step is to pour our cup and a quarter of white sugar into there. 
and you're just going to mix that up. And this will look really grainy, but that's okay. And it might look a little weird, but that's all right. And where's my spatula? Uh, we're just gonna make sure that we're cleaning our equipment off, making sure that we have everything mixed in there properly. And then our next bit is actually going to be our teaspoon of vanilla that we will mix in there. Now it's going to look really chunky and it's probably going to really stick on your whisk, but that's all right, uh, that it will start coming off as soon as you start mixing in the eggs. Uh, so the next bit, we're going to mix in one egg at a time. I know they only have two, so it's not too hard to lose count, but we're going to mix in one egg and really, really mix it in there. Because eggs in baking are binders and because they're mostly made up of proteins, and so adding eggs into things helps bind whatever you're baking together in a way that it holds its shape well and whatever end product you have, it just looks really, really nice. So then we'll add in our second egg. And we'll mix that fully in there. Really make sure you're scraping around the edges of the bowl to get any chunks of the cocoa powder and sugar that are just hanging about. And we're actually going to beat this with our whisk for a good minute or two, just to make sure that we've got everything mixed together and it's a good texture. Really making sure the eggs cover all the sugar and the cocoa powder and there's no chunks of butter left in there. I just keep, keep this train going. Oh, how's everybody doing today? How are your brownies coming along, Kat? You could definitely mix in too large of a bowl. Um, that's definitely no issue. I was about to do the same thing, but then I realized that, you know, oh, hey, I've got a pretty good sized bowl. <laughs> All right, so then with a rubber spatula, we're just gonna make sure that everything is off our whisk, no chunks are left. Do the best we can with that. Clean up some of my things. All right, so then the end product of what we're looking for is like a really, really smooth brownie batter that you're just able to pick it up and it'll just kind of ribbon right back down into the bowl in those nice thick strands. Right, so then our last piece, if you're not mixing anything in, I'm putting in chocolate chips in mine, um, but for just the plain brownies, what's left is you want to take a sifter, which I've got a flour sifter, which is a really handy piece of equipment to have, or you could just use like a really fine mesh sieve if you have one of these to make sure that you are sifting in your flour really nicely. So, but I'm just going to use this. So we'll take our half a cup of flour and pour it right on in. And we'll just kind of gently sift it right on top of there because we want to make sure that there's no chunks of flour in these brownies. We want them to be super, super fudgy, super, super light. Tapping any bits out. All right.
Well, yeah, sifting flour rather than just dumping it all in, make sure that you don't have any solid clumps of flour that you could miss while mixing it into the uh, rest of the batter. And if you miss some flour lumps, they won't break up all the way while baking. And you'll cut into a piece and you'll have just like a little lump of flour right there that you might bite into. And that just doesn't taste great. So I would say that is the importance of sifting when it comes to baking. Uh, you don't need to sift flour into everything. There are a lot of recipes that you can just dump your flour right on in and that's fine. But uh, usually with the things where you want to really make sure that there's no flour lumps in it, that's where you want to make sure it's sifted in and it's really fine and there's no lumps. All right, that's a really good question though. <laughs> Um, so then once you've got the flour sifted in there, you will take your rubber spatula and you'll just kind of gently fold the flour and the batter together. Let me tip this up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Getting used to these cameras. Um, so yeah, you'll just kind of fold it, kind of pull it from around the edge and you will fold over with your rubber spatula. Kind of pull it, really making sure you're getting any batter that's around the edge. And then you just fold until all of the flour is mixed in. Oh, and if I had thought about it before, I would have prepped my pan beforehand. Um, but that's okay. It won't take too long. Alright, so folding in the flour doesn't usually take too long. So it's folded in. It's real nice. Just kind of going through again, making sure there's no flour lumps that might have escaped the uh, sifter. And then I'm going to measure out my chocolate chips. Is anybody putting anything else into their brownies? I know nuts like pecans or uh, not almonds, walnuts is really popular. Chocolate chips, yeah, me too. Um, so you wanna do about two thirds of a cup of chocolate chips if you are just adding anything in. Uh, you could add less, you could add more. Uh, I thought about adding in some of those Andes mints. You know, the, like the chocolate with the mix. Hi, Korg! Thanks for joining. <laughs> I hope you like these brownies. Right, so then we're just going to make sure to fold those in. Real nice. We don't need to mix them in too long. We're just getting them kind of evenly spread out. Then I'm just gonna, hi Em, thanks for joining. We're glad to see you here. So this is my baking pan that I'm gonna have. I haven't done this size of a recipe before, so I'm unsure of how much it'll fill this brownie pan, but we're gonna find out together. So then, you want to take your preferred baking pan and then just... <laughs> yep, you didn't miss it. You didn't miss much. So then you're just going to spray down your pan. Get the bottom and the edges. Oh, that's really loud. Then, oh, I got to go over here. Okay, so then you want your uh, parchment paper. Don't really need much, just need to be able to cover the bottom. And if it goes up the sides a bit, that's fine too. Um, that's just an extra layer of protection so that your brownies come out nice and even. Then, now that our pan has been sprayed and parchment has been let down, yeah, brownies should turn out really well. We're going to, we're gonna now scrape our batter 
right into our pan. Let's see. And then you're just gonna spread it out. Ooh, this is a really thick brownie batter. Oh, I'm excited for these. I'm excited for your crafting night, part two. Can't? That's gonna be great. Are you going to be joining us or are you just hosting uh, the craft night? Uh, it's not a lot of eggs. I, it's, it's more butter than eggs. So I've got a little visual here for my recipe that I've got. So it's 10 tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter, uh, one and a quarter cups of white sugar, a uh, quarter teaspoon of salt, two eggs, a half a cup of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of vanilla, and then three two thirds of a cup of whatever you want to add into it. Uh, I did. <laughs> Thanks. I painted it like an hour ago. <laughs> I thought this would be a nice visual to have since uh, I'm going to be, you know, doing quite a few recipes. I thought it would be good to have a visual that you know I could upload to my Instagram. That way, you know, if you go there, then you can check that out and you can have a recipe right there. Uh, I'll have the mixing instructions in the description, so that'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought it was a cute idea. Um, so we've got these brownies. I spread them out pretty good. You want to get them nice and even, but I'm sure they'll even out a little bit while baking. So then, got our pan and our oven is nice and warmed up. So I'm just going to pop that on in and set a timer for about, oh, how long does it take? It says bake time is about 30 minutes. So then we will just set a timer here. I, I usually set a timer for a few minutes below what it says, just to make sure that, you know, depending on the pan that you use, it might need a little less time or it might need a little more time. Uh, that's something to really be mindful of that usually when you look up a recipe on the internet, it will tell you the size and kind of pan that they're using. Um, you licked the spoon clean. Oh, that's great. I'm glad it tasted good. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so setting a timer, I set my timer for about 27 minutes. Just to be safe, I'm sure since my pan is uh, very tall and not so big that that might bake it all the way through. Uh, I had to think about my words there, but it should be fine. Yeah, snow. Oh, altitude adjustments. I've actually not thought of that. Uh, let me see if I can look up some baking tips for higher altitudes. That's a really good question. Tips for baking tips for higher altitude. Oh cool, where can I your dad's link it? Alright. Okay, so it says for higher altitudes you want to reduce your sugar uh, by one to two tablespoons for every cup. So since I did a cup and a quarter of sugar, uh, I guess at a higher altitude you would want to do a cup and a tablespoon. Be well, a cup and yeah, yeah, a cup and a tablespoon because that will be two tablespoons less than uh, a quarter of a cup, I believe. Let's see. Let me double check this here on my amounts. Actually, I have this cute towel that tells me 
amounts, I think, I believe, yes. And then it says increase your liquids. So we don't really have any adding additional liquids in this recipe, so I don't think that that will be too important. But it does also say to increase oven temperature by 25 degrees. So you will probably want to set your oven for 350 degrees just to be safe. But that is a great question, and I'm really gl glad you thought about it. Yeah, I've got this. Uh, I've got this towel that I got as a housewarming gift, actually. That it's got like kitchen conversions on it. It's kind of like the more obscure kitchen conversions, but it's really cute and I love it so much because I'm terrible with numbers. So it definitely helps out a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so while we're waiting, I'm just going to clean up a bit and put things in the sink. That way things are nice and even. And then we can just kind of hang out and chat while we wait for these brownies to bake. Cat, I don't know if you noticed, but I painted my kitchen pink yesterday. Uh, I wanted to have my nice pink kitchen for my first stream. So I'm definitely so excited to have it. It looks so good. <laughs> I love having my pink kitchen. Yeah, fresh paint. Yep. I've had I've had these couple gallons of pink paint just kind of hanging out and waiting and yesterday I just got the bug to do it. So I'm like, yeah, let's just do that. Hang my heat pads up. I'm gonna just wipe up this bit of cocoa powder I spilt. All right. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I did, I did. I, I wanna do a lot more baking streams and, and teach different recipes. So I definitely wanted my nice pink kitchen ready to go. Um, I'd say my ne the next house project though is I'm actually going to be painting the cabinets because uh, as you can see they're just kind of like a, a boring brown and it doesn't look too great with the kitchen. Uh, so I'm actually going to be painting uh, all the cabinets black and I'm going to do some pink detail work on them. So I, uh, I have to go out and get the paint and then I have to get some, uh, I think I need to sand down these cabinets because they're older and I think they have like a, a layer of varnish on them. So I have to get rid of that varnish. Yeah, yep, black with pink accents. They've got like this raised edge with like this detail work. Here, let me show you real quick. Um, so they've got like this raised edge here that I want to paint pink and uh, so I definitely think that that'll look really really good once that's all done. And then, yeah, yeah I think that'd be really cute too. Um, then, let's see, um, do you guys have any suggestions of what kind of a uh, baking recipe you would want to see next time? Because I'll do this again. I'd love to do this again now that I've finally gotten it going. Um, if you have any suggestions uh, of kind of classic desserts that you want uh, done or, you know, something a little more experimental, I could see what that, you know, I can see what that would do. Cookies? Oh, okay. What kind of cookies do you want to see? Because I have tons of chocolate chips. So I could do chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip, I could do, I could do both. The peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. Like those sound really good, actually. Oh, yeah. Like a peanut butter chocolate chip cookie. That sounds nice. All right. 
homemade granola bar made with honey and brown sugar as opposed to white sugar. Oh, granola bar does sound good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being a granola girl. I, I love granola. I definitely, yeah. I love, uh, one of my favorite breakfasts is granola with uh, yogurt, like a vanilla yogurt, and then uh, with fresh cherries on there. It's, it's just such a good one. Oh, that's a really smart idea. So that they're little rounds instead of rectangular little bars. That's, that's really smart. Oh man, I've never made my own yogurt before. Is that, is that a difficult process? How would you even start that? Do you just get some um, unpasteurized milk and you go with it from there? Or can you use it, can you do pasteurized milk? I'm gonna get a pencil real quick. I'm just gonna write some of these ideas down. That way I can start looking up things and I could probably take one of my mini tiny notebooks uh, and maybe fill it with uh, possible recipes that I could stream. So I will be right back. So, before this whole stay at home order happened, I actually bought a whole bunch of bananas. They were very, very green bananas, mind you, and they're just now starting to ripen. So, I think one of uh, my other recipes that I'll stream is making banana bread. Uh, which I think is a really good idea, especially, you know, if you have other fruit at home that you could bake, uh, especially, you know, if we have to stay home for, you know, a couple of weeks or at least reduce our outside time for a while, baking at home is always a really good idea and especially baking with the produce that you have in the house that might be coming up on its expiration date. I always find is a really good idea. So we'll do like banana bread. And then we've got chocolate chip cookies and then peanut butter cookies or a mix of both. I'll write all three on there because you know, that's three recipes to do. Banana whiskey. That sounds interesting. Banana rum bread sounds good. I think I've got some rum back there uh, where I have all of my booze set up, so that's a really good idea. That, yeah, that would be a lot like a rum cake. No badass. Oh cool, what a cool name. Yeah, Kat's in here. Kat, you have a guest! <laughs> Thank you for joining. I'm the Magpie's Nest and today we are baking fudgy quarantine brownies and it looks like we've got about 16 minutes left on our timer to check things out. Um, 
<laughs> You're nervous around cat. No, don't be nervous. Oh, we're all nervous here. I'm super nervous. This is my first stream ever, so welcome. This is my inaugural visit, uh, not visit, uh, inaugural stream. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. <laughs> Sorry. And then we'll do granola bars. <laughs> Thanks, cat. <laughs> I'm glad I have you in my corner. <laughs> then there was a banana rum cake. Yeah, the hearing myself was definitely threw me off. I ended up muting uh, myself on here, so I'm just trusting what I'm physically saying rather than seeing it on here because there's just that little bit of a delay. <laughs> so it's, I'll, I'll definitely have to get used to it. <sighs> but it's definitely been a lot of fun though. All right, so then Go back up here. I feel like I missed a recipe or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, granola, and then maybe do banana bread. I have apples too, so I want to eventually do uh, apple turnovers. Uh, more of in a way of doing a fancy apple pie version of uh, a pop tart, which I think would be really good because it'll be more of uh, a nice flaky pastry with uh, a little bit of apple cinnamon filling in there and then maybe like a frosting glaze on top because I love the idea of, you know, taking like a classic 90s kid, uh, you know, breakfast pastry because I definitely know I ate pop tarts so many times. Uh, that was probably my constant breakfast for a good number of years while I was in school. Until they came out with uh, toaster strudels. Those things are great. I love toaster strudels. So we'll do those. Add pop tarts. Then, hmm. Yeah, toaster strudels are great. Uh, uh, what's uh, what's your favorite flavor of a toaster strudel that you've had? <laughs> I don't think my father, the inventor of toaster strudel, would like to hear this. <laughs> oh, Mean Girls was such a good movie. The strawberry cream's a good one, but you would scoop the cherry filling out, then eat the pastry? What did, what did you do to the cherry filling? Would you throw it away, or would you eat it separately? Okay, at least you ate it. All right, all right. I was concerned you were, like, just scooping out the cherry filling and then just just pop it out. <laughs> yeah. I think one, I think my favorite flavor was the apple, because uh, it definitely just tasted like an apple pie, but wrapped up in beautiful puff pastry. Sucky. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. That's a visual I could have lived my life without. <sighs> oh, jeez. I'm not going to make a gif of that, but Cat can. You know what? I'm going to order some cherry toaster strudels and have them delivered to your house. That way you can eat them on stream next time and just, uh, just show us how you would, uh, get rid of the cherry filling. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, did you try the brownie batter too, Korg? No. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it tastes good. <laughs> oh my god, M! That is so funny! <laughs> like cat over a speaker at a store. Excuse me. Can you bring me boxes of cherry toaster strudels? I need the filling, that is all. Just. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, these brownies are smelling super good. We've got about nine minutes left. Oh, so we're definitely getting there. And uh, once they are baked, you definitely want them to cool off for a bit. Um, I'll speed up that process by putting them in my freezer, but usually if you're baking them at home, you probably want to let them sit for about 10 minutes or so, just so everything can settle really nicely and uh, it isn't as hot. But, you know, if you like to live dangerously, then go ahead and cut right into those bad boys and, you know, eat away and burn the roof of your mouth like eating fresh pizza. But I want my brownies to be in danger, is your middle name. <laughs> Cat Danger. That's a pretty good middle name. Man, my middle name is so boring. Ugh. Anne. Anne is a pretty name. <laughs> Josephine Danger. That works too. The the danger part is it's it's assumed. It's a silent la it's a silent middle name. It's like I say I've got a silent middle name because I have two middle names. Um that you know I like Elizabeth Gale are my two middle names. Like, I have a very, very long name. I like to say that uh, whenever middle names come up, I say that my name is a name that somebody would give to a child expecting them to be like a Victorian, uh, like a Victorian book writer, like a novelist. Yeah, because my whole name is uh, Samantha Gale Elizabeth Massey. And so it's just like a super, super, super long name. Yeah, super Victorian, right? Like you'd expect to see that in like golden little scrawl on the front cover of like a romance book, like a gothic romance book, I think is what I would write. Yeah, <laughs> a dumb Abby character, that'd be great. I've watched a bit of that show. Downtown Abbey. <laughs> I used to think it was Downtown Abbey. And then I heard it, I heard the, the show, like a commercial say, it's like, oh, it's Downton Abbey. I'm like, it's not Downtown? What? Oh man, that's so embarrassing. So. But I've watched a bit of it. It seems like a pretty good show. Yeah, it's like, it's just like downtown, but there's no W in town, so it's like downtown. But, I mean, it's British, so they pronounce their words weird anyway. I mean, like, they say, they say aluminum is aluminium. And that always makes me laugh, like watching the Great British Baking Show, because like, Lining my pan with aluminium. It's like, oh, you make it sound so much fancier than it actually is. It's just a thin sheet of metal. It is great. I love that show so much.
I just call it tinfoil because, hey, I grew up in the South. Where every soda is a Coke and everybody is a y'all. So, <laughs> foil, yep. <laughs> tinfoil. All right, about five minutes left. Yeah, that's a really good point. Is it? Oh, I don't have the tinfoil right here. But that's a really good question. Is there a specific... Because we know it's aluminum, right? Um, is there such thing as a tin foil where it's mostly tin? Hmm. Yeah. You do say y'all a lot, but it definitely, it fits though. I think the Midwest, you know, yeah, like a lot, a lot of people in the Midwest, they, they have family that, you know, is from different parts of the Midwest and we all just kind of like mix together. Aw, Rupert sniff in the oven, that's so cute. Oh, Gordon's just, my cat, Gordon, he's just hanging out in the living room. I thought he would wander in and visit because, you know, it's around his lunchtime and so he usually starts screaming for lunch at about three. So I'm definitely curious as to where he's at. That's a, that's a good point, Em, that they're just words that work. We just don't have replacements for them. Yeah. Because it definitely makes sense because I think ten at least used to be used in a lot of things because there's like this type of uh, like cutting instrument that looks like scissors, they're called tin snips. And so I guess you use those to cut really thin sheets of metal. So I can only assume that tin is also really, really thin, but I don't know. I'm not a metal metallurgist. Metallurgist? Somebody that works with metal. I'm just a baker. But this is definitely, this is a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm having a real good time hanging out with you guys. So, well, you all sh should be careful with my gender identifiers. Um, I think y'all and fixin'. Yeah, saying y'all and fixin' is definitely a good and those those southern uh like comments or um statements not comments statements like butter me up and call me a biscuit i i love that one so much because uh, <laughs> my mom is from oklahoma that she grew up there and so she definitely has a lot of those southern tendencies and whenever she gets on the phone with any of her family she uh, slips back into her southern Oklahoma accent and uh, it'll just kind of hang there for about a day or so after she's done talking with her family. It's, it's just really great. Um, okay, yeah, that's definitely, that is very good to know. Thank you, Em. Thank you for letting me know what your preferred pronouns are. Yes, if anybody here uh, does have preferred pronouns, please let me know. I, you know, try and be very careful with them. I try not to assume. Uh, but, yeah, thank you so much. So, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, definitely, I've, I've noticed... Um, not with you specifically, Kat, but I definitely notice more with my friends up here that, you know, speaking about certain subjects or saying certain things that it's like, oh yeah, and you know, there's, there's that bit of, uh, Minnesota and that bit of Canadian and a bit of Wisconsin. Oh, all right, so there's our timer. So we're just going to grab my oven glove because... If you don't have an oven glove on, that pan is not going to love you, okay? It's a hot pan. Please be safe. Oh, these little 
looks so good. Okay, so these brownies are definitely done. Well, if you're a minute behind, that's okay. That's no big deal. All right, but we've got delicious, delicious brownies. I'll tip them up just so you can see. All right, so here's our delicious, delicious brownies. Oh, they look so good. Oh, and they smell really good too. So I'm just going to pop these in the freezer for a bit. And then we are going to get rocking. freezer because I have a ton of ice cream in there because I have no impulse control at the store um, but that's okay so I put them in my fridge so we'll just keep them there for a couple of minutes and then yeah <laughs> but no vanilla I have chocolate and I have strawberry but you know I think these brownies would go good with some chocolate yeah yeah just double up on the chocolate it's a natural decision all right Strawberry on chocolate? Hmm. I'll try it with both. I'll put like a scoop, a scoop of each on there. And I'll see because I know stra like chocolate covered strawberry is a huge flavor combination. Uh, but I'm not that big of a fan of chocolate covered strawberries. Like yeah. caramel on strawberry. That sounds really good. That sounds like it would be a good candy. Like do kind of a, like caramels with strawberry in them. Well, maybe not whole strawberries, but maybe like, like a strawberry puree or something kind of mixed in and have like a, like a caramel candy. I have a book. I have to find it. Fave non-chocolate ice cream option. Yeah, that's pretty solid. I like making strawberry milkshakes with strawberry ice cream. The chocolate ice cream, I'll just kind of eat it straight. Um, but yeah, I definitely love like a good milkshake. Yeah, I've got, um, sorry, I got off track. Uh, I do have this book of recipes of different candies to make. Uh, it, it covers tons of things like gelatin based candies, like marshmallows and uh, gummy bears and the like candy little you know the sugar covered jelly candies um, I don't think they have a specific name to them but they've got tons of them <laughs> no my milkshakes do not bring all the boys to the yard no matter how hard I try it's just I don't know I don't know what am I missing from my milkshakes I mean I think it might be the dancing <sighs> I think that has something to do with no boys in my yard. Like, I make the milkshakes, and I sit outside on my stoop, and no boys show up. I think it's, I think it's the fact that I don't dance, and I know I don't dance, and I'm okay with not dancing. Oh, a hot fudge milkshake. That sounds good. Actually, a hot fudge sundae from Dairy Queen sounds good right now. I mean, it's been years since I've had Dairy Queen, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm proud of that fact, but I used to work at Dairy Queen, and having to refill those machine, like the, the soft serve machines with uh, the ice cream mix, like just really turned me off to the idea of ice cream. There is one reason two blocks from me. I don't, what do you mean? Like, there's a reason two blocks from you that there's no boys coming to your yard? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh! A Dairy Queen. I get it. Okay. Yeah, there's a Dairy Queen in town here, and I'm happy about that. It's like one of those old-style ones, too, where their building uh, looks like a little milk barn. 
And it's really cute. <laughs> Can I get a chicken strip basket? <laughs> Your chicken strip baskets are so sad now. I remember when the chicken tenders were like this big, like it was a legitimate chicken tender. And now they're like teeny little nuggets. And it's, it's so sad because I, I love being able to dip the chicken tender in the gravy. We're at the one. So. <laughs> you good? Bagel of type teen? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Dairy Queen. Uh, yeah, I think, I think working at uh, Snelling, <laughs> on Snelling, Snelling Avenue, or, yeah. Um, <laughs> smelling. Oh, man. <laughs> there you go, you got it. Oh, let me just make sure the oven is off. Um, oh, I hear thunder outside. Is it storming up by you, Cap? I wonder if this is moving south or north. Let me check the weather channel real quick. Rainy? Oh, yeah. It's left of the snowstorm. Yeah, yeah, hashtag Minnesota. Well, I'm definitely grateful for the warmer weather because that means Alex and I are going to be doing some work in the backyard. Uh, we're going to be uh, pretty much, oh god, what's the term? Mm. We're just going to be restarting the lawn in the backyard. We got some stuff to kill off all of the weeds because there's tons of weeds and there's tons of just like crawling plants all around. Uh, so, you know, waiting for it to be dry and for it to be a little warmer before we do that. Then we're going to re grass the yeah yeah the rain definitely looks like it's moving north it looks like we're kind of oh no we are not on the edge of it okay yeah it's just kind of rolling through right now yeah i definitely i love i love thunderstorms during the day but I can't ever get to sleep if they're happening at night when I'm trying to sleep. It just, I'm just never able to get to sleep if it's actively, you know, thundering out. But, you know, that's all right. Yeah, I, I worry about it a lot too. Um, it's just, it's just something about it that, you know, as like, I guess as a human, m the monkey part of my brain is like, oh, there's a storm going on, don't sleep, you know? So I think that's definitely it. It's just, just that monkey brain of ours. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of work in the backyard this year. Um, hoping to get a good amount of stuff done before the summer that way you know we can have we can have people over and you know everybody can see our new house and so that's definitely what I want to start working on because I'm almost out of painting projects in the house um, I have the dining room to paint pink to match the kitchen um, and then you know once excuse me once we've got the master bedroom fixed up then we're going to be moving on to painting that but we don't really have much left to do in the house but that's okay all right then oh how's how's everybody doing today everybody's day going well i watched cat do Sea of Thieves earlier, and that looks like such a fun game. Oh, you feel productive. That's good. I'm glad I could help you feel productive. How was your, uh, you ran a 5k. 
in lieu of you being in uh, at your, you know, at the actual 5K. So how was that? Oh, you're trying to get stuff taken care of. Well, I hope, I hope everything is going okay. I hope that, you know, it's nothing serious and that you're able to get things done well. Oh, 5K. Yeah, 5K. How long did it take for you to run the, the five kilometers? Um, well, I'm sorry it's not going okay, but I hope it does get better. Definitely sending sending our thoughts and our love to you, Em. I hope everything's going to be okay. Okay, 41 minutes. Goal is 35. Okay, well, you're only six minutes off, so that's not too bad. Oh, by the end of the year? You should be able to get that. How is your foot since you said that it needed to be tested? That does sound intense, but it's probably doable. I mean, 35 minutes for five miles, that's a seven minute mile. That's pretty good. I'd say that's pretty reasonable. Oh, 39 is your average. No, that's pretty good. Definitely no, I could never do a seven minute mile, but, but hey, you know, I bet if I stuck with it, you know, as well as you do, Kat, I definitely could get, get there too. Running well, see, running seems like one of those sports that a lot of people could get into without having to dump a bunch of money into it. So definitely think that, you know, it's something that a lot more people should do, especially since... You know, communities do, uh, communities do runs to drum up funds for various things in the communities, and, yeah. Oh, they won't go outside if it's raining. Oh, <laughs> poor baby. Well, hopefully it lets up soon. I think the rain should be done in a bit. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, the shoes are definitely very important. That's probably where the most of your money is going to go if you want to run safely. Yeah, I definitely agree. Oh boy. Uh, looking at the weather app, it looks like it's going to rain all through tomorrow and then it might snow oh man that sucks foot pain usually yeah okay em, we'll see you later well see you when you get back but yeah back knee and foot pain yeah Yeah, if we weren't all stuck in our houses having to work from home, that would definitely make it a little easier to say, oh, it's raining, but that's okay. But, you know, it's better than uh, a really big blizzard 
I, I would say. So I would take rain over snow any day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Well, uh, I'm going to go grab, I'm going to go check out the brownies. So I will be right back. I put my flippers back on. down now. It's still a little warm right on the bottom, but that's all right. But now that these are done, just going to grab a knife and I'm going to cut these into little fourth squares. Probably Four by six would be good. All right. So then, just got my cute little. Plate a couple of them up to show them off. All right, so then here we are. Got our fudgy brownies that are all done and they're still nice and warm so they're ready to eat. But, you know, once again, uh, I'm the Magpie's Nest, and I'm really glad that all of you could join me today, uh, and especially those who followed along and made our fudgy quarantine brownies with us, and that uh, I will definitely be back within the next few days with our next recipe, and we will... You know, just have some good fun together, and we'll chat, and we'll hang out, and it'll just be nice and relaxing. So, thank you all for being here, and I hope you have a great evening. Bye!